Chapter 2, Section 6, Ratios and Proportions. So a ratio is just a comparison of two numbers, and it looks like a fraction. So any basic fraction could be a ratio. For example, 2 thirds. It could also be something that's not reduced. like 16 24ths. And so you might get these two ratios and they're going to ask if they are equivalent. So what we would do is we would take the 2 thirds and reduce it, which we can't because it's already in its simplest form, but we notice that that 16 24ths could be reduced. So we want to find the largest number that goes into 16 and into 24. And so 2 would work, 4 would work, um, 8 would work. 8 is the biggest, so 8 is going to go into 16 twice, and 8 is going to go into 24 three times. So we know that those are equivalent ratios. Now, that's method number one. There might be some instances where um, reducing it may not do you any good, but I'm going to use the same example just to show you another method. Okay, in this case, this is where we cross multiply. Now, I know those are the hated two words in my class, but these are two different situations. This is where you were taught to cross multiply, and somehow that got confused over the years. So we're going to take the cross product diagonally, and we're going to take 2 times 24, which is going to give me 48, and I'm going to see if that is equal to the other cross product which is 3 times 16. 3 times 16 is also 48. So if those two numbers come up to be equal to each other, then this checks out as an equivalent ratio. So again, reduce the fraction if it's simple, and if it's not, this is your one opportunity to cross multiply. So in our first examples, we had ratios. They were fractions and we compared them. Now we have a proportion, which actually takes one of our ratios and sets it equal to another one. So we also do the same thing in this proportion. This is where we cross product. So we're going to take x times 5 and set that equal to 10 times 3. So that's going to be 5x equals 30. And then this is a one step algebra 1 equation. So we're going to divide both sides by 5, giving me a value of x equals 6. Now, you could sub that value back in for x over there, or up there, and that'd be x over 10, which would be 6 over 10, and 6 over 10 does reduce to be 3 fifths. So we know that would check out. Some different things that you might see, you might see something like this. x plus 5 over, excuse me, x plus 4 over 5 equals 3 eighths. So we're going to cross product again. Now, understand that the 8 is being multiplied by everything. So I'm going to write it out as distributive property. 8 times x plus 4 equals, and I'm going to go ahead and do the 5 times 3, which is 15. So now I'm going to draw my arrows because I'm multiplying the 8 times both of those. So that's going to be 8x plus 32 equals 15. I'm going to scroll down so I can keep this at eye level. This is a multi-step equation, so we're going to subtract 32 from both sides. And so this is going to give me 8x equals, now, 15 minus 32, that's going to give me, give me a negative answer, because 32 is bigger than 15, and so then I take 32 minus 15, which is going to give me 17. You'll notice that 8 is not going to go into 17 equally, 
So I can just leave it negative 17 over 8. Or if you want to make it a mixed number, that's going to be negative 2 and 1 8. Either way is fine. So that should just about cover it for ratios and proportions.